Okay, so I'm going to try and explain the basic concept behind sharding and the introduction of Casper. So sometime soon we'll have to realise that the internet we've created really cannot continue in its current form. It is far too centralised, it's far too dependent upon centralised servers and, and so on. And we can't really define a current state of the internet to be able to replicate that, to be able to understand how we can split up our services. So in a distributed model what we have is that we have a distributed nodes and then those nodes can distribute uh, processing, data and so on. This al allows things to run in parallel without creating a bottleneck around the centralised uh, node. In distributed ledgers we move towards a completely distributed infrastructure where we can actually define the complete state of the whole network at any given time but where each part of the networks can act autonomously to the other parts. We can create a completely anonymised infrastructure through our distributed uh, ledger and where nodes can act uh, with anonymity. So this happens in Zcash uh, where we can actually trade uh, currency uh, and to be anonymised. Again, our transactions, our smart contracts and so on are anonymised. But sometimes we want to show the world what it is that we have. So it might be we're defining for the complete world that we have a certain ID or that uh, we have created a contract between someone and we want that to be verifiable. In that world, we have a non-anonymised uh, infrastructure. So DLT, or distributed ledgers, are the future of the internet. And we must find a way to take us from where we are now to where we want to be. And with this, trust will be embedded into our future internet. Just now, very little can be uh, trusted. We've created an internet which is basically focused on client-server architectures, uh, which really have very little trust built into them. So in, a, in the most basic form, this is how uh, blockchain kind of works. So this example takes what we see in Bitcoin. So in Bitcoin, uh, our traditional mo model of a transaction is that Bob contacts the bank and tells his bank that he wants to pay Alice $10 in this case and gives her ID and sort code. There is then a transfer between two banks and then bank B will tell Alice that she has now received uh, $10. So that's a traditional model and we're using trusted entities on either, either side. But there are flaws in each of the, um, uh, the paths that we take here. So why can't Bob and Alice just transfer uh, funds to each other without involving the two trusted entities here? So in a Bitcoin world, what we have is that uh, Bob signs a transaction with his private key, proves his identity with his public key, and defines that he wants to pay Alice 10 Bitcoins. He gives his address, ID, and he gives Alice his ID, and he then gets miners to agree that he has enough money in his account, and also that he hasn't double accounted uh, for it. So the miners then agree, typically within a 10 minute period, that this is a, a valid transaction and then that is added on to the blockchain. Just now we create a consensus by creating a puzzle and the puzzle is to find the hash that will work for all of the uh, transactions which have been agreed uh, on, on the network. Whoever finds that will be rewarded with a certain number of bitcoins perhaps 12 and a half bitcoins. And in this way, we create a competitive world. And we don't define that as proof of work. It is required for you to do some work to be able to prove that you are valid onto the network. It would be too difficult 
for somebody to try and take over the consensus because it would be too expensive. But what's happening is that we're consuming the energy of a country such as Ireland to be able to create this consensus. So we need to move away from this problem of proof of work. Another thing that happened quite recently was that the Crypto Kitties network caused a bit of uh, problems on the Ethereum blockchain. And they were so popular, it was one of the first applications that was written as a complete e-commerce solution on the blockchain. But they were so popular that they started to expose the, uh, the transaction rate within Ethereum. And it was reckoned that the whole network started to slow down. So with CryptoKitties, it was possible through smart contracts to buy uh, these virtual pets. And for a while, they were actually very successful. But the problem was, was that we started to be hitting uh, uh, transaction rates, which were causing us problems. So we were <coughs> hitting uh, what was thought to be a theoretical uh, uh, rate that uh, that they would we would then struggle to scale the network up. So Ethereum was uh, was now and and has now had the problem was, is that did it hit its theoretical limit and that we couldn't get any more uh, transactions, which would have meant that would have slowed down the growth of Ethereum, or could we find ways? to be able to overcome the, the problem. And we see with transaction uh, speeds, if, if Ethereum and Bitcoin are to achieve the same rates as something like Visa, then they will have to speed up their, their uh, the payment or the transaction speeds. You can see here that Ethereum lags behind uh, Visa and PayPal because of the number of the, the limits on the number of transactions that can be processed at any given time. So the two methods that are now being introduced into Ethereum hopefully will un overcome or migrate the problem of the limiting transaction speed and also move away from proof of work as the main consensus method. So sharding is uh, is uh, is one of the methods that's been it's going to be rolled out. And uh, Vitlick uh, defines this or gives an example that uh, we could act, we, we can see this as a number of independent islands. And each island can trade on its own with its own users, its own IDs. So we can create a ledger for each of the uh, islands. And this is the sharding. Each one runs a shard and can actually transact. And, keep, and we have a trusted node or nodes which will keep the consensus and that shard up to date. So they can operate independently from all the other islands. And then what we do is that we, if we have any transactions between the islands, we record that as as, as a transaction from one island to another and then the receipt confirmation back again. And in this way we can start to scale up Ethereum to be able to create multiple shards that are working independently but where the main ledger has a viewpoint on the whole of the network. Okay, so basically what happens is that we create what's called a Merkle tree and the Merkle tree uh, is well known in, uh, in, in blockchain because we can actually create a, a global uh, state for the whole of the infrastructure and then split that up into, uh, a, 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 split that up into a tree which will then bind together to produce the, the global root. So in this case we have three shards and they are responsible for their own uh, states. By taking each of the states within uh, each shard, we can actually build up the global root. So the global root contains the complete record of all the transactions that have happened, but independently each shard 
can actually create their own transaction log. So the way it works is that each shard is given an ID and is autonomous uh, from other shards. Then we have IDs with inside uh, each of these and they have uh, receipts and transactions. So the transactions are the, uh, the transactions that have happened with inside the shard and the receipts are the, uh, the results of the transactions and have been verified by a, a node that, the, that is correct. So in this case we have an ID <coughs> for it and then it's signed by uh, a node with inside the shard to be able to verify that that is a, a correct uh, transaction or that the shard is in a correct state. We then have a, a, the previous state uh, for, for a block and then the post date is after all the transactions have been taken into account. So this gives us our infrastructure where we can define for each block there is a given state and then within a transaction group we can actually define each of the shards, shards uh, in terms of all the transactions that have happened uh, in the current block. The way that we uh, do this between shards is that one shard, in this case Bob has 100 coins and Alice has 200 and she's in one shard and he's in another one, then uh, this shard here sends a proof of receipt that Bob wants to pay Alice 5 coins and has an ID. That is then sent to the other shard and then it's consumed with a certain ID and proven and then that shard sends a successful payment with a receipt to the other shard. So in the global record, we now define that Bob has 95 coins and Alice has 205. The other method that has been proposed is, is Casper. And Casper moves away <coughs> from a proof of work. A proof of work is a competitive infrastructure where the miners must compete for uh, work. In this case we overcome what's called the denial of service on the network so that uh, not one node can take over the network. It requires work and work is costly. So in this case uh, Alice will say <coughs> as a miner that she wants to do the work. If she wins then she'll get a reward for that. A proof of stake moves away from that and towards nodes which are well defined for creating good work and delivering it on time. In this case we end up with a transaction fee for uh, the miners. So initially uh, Casper will, will overlay the proof of work with the proof of stake so that we can migrate away from proof of work and eventually stop that and move towards a proof of state where uh, miners will be paid a transaction fee. So we'll run alongside and it'll be introduced as a shard or a side chain uh, as part of the project which will allow developers to be able to create this proof of stake alongside the existing proof of work infrastructure. What's proposed is that the proof of work uh, will drop for the reward from 3 ethers to 0.6 and so we'll eventually start to move away and hopefully we'll be able to increase the consensus network as it's less costly uh, to come into it. The overall cost of securing the whole of the Ethereum uh, infrastructure will drop from 1500 ethers to just 32 and we should be able to build a wider uh, consensus module. And as I said, Casper will allow developers to be able to develop uh, in, a, in an independent way without affecting the uh, current infrastructure. Okay, so that's been an outline of uh, sharding and Casper. I hope you understand the scope of this and how, how we can move away from uh, the centralised approach towards one which is based on distributed ledgers. Thank you.